I know almost how to pronounce Verfassenschutz correctly, um, but I'm still working on it, and so um, I'll therefore be speaking in English. I'm Jeremy Zimmerman. I realize uh, hearing these stories that I'm a kind of a bourgeois activist. You know, I'm born and raised in uh, what had become the Schengen space. Um, I've never been threatened by a drone attack. I've never risked my life uh, in bombs. I've spent most of my uh, uh, life in front of computers. Um, I've been working with the issues related to surveillance and privacy for, for the last um, number of years. And, um, and w what interests me in this, in this project here is that usually when we speak about surveillance, we speak about darkness. We speak about something cold as the, the darkest night. We, we speak of those stories uh, that we usually never hear uh, while describing uh, an apparatus for crushing people's lives, crushing people's existence out of uh, deceit, manipulation, and the, the abuse of power. Uh, the security apparat, the surveillance apparat, we don't see it is in the darkness. But the, the effect of surveillance is usually in the darkness as well. The worst effect of surveillance is what we don't see is the, the behaviors we don't allow ourselves, is the, the words we won't speak because we know we are under surveillance. The, the behaviors that change what doesn't happen when we are being surveilled, what stays in the darkness, is actually what we have to lose as a society and what we're losing every day when we know we live in a world uh, ruled by mass surveillance. Also, what we don't see, what stays in the darkness, is usually those people, those people working for the Verfassungsschutz, for the BND, for the GCHQ, for the NSA, and for all those institutions. They're usually faceless people. They're usually in those gray suits, in those gray offices. We don't know their names. We don't know who they are. And speaking about it, even thinking about this, bring those dark thoughts. Um, it is, it, it, those are stories that generate fear, that generate anxiety. Um, what amazed me when I got in contact with such people is to see when you speak of the record in the darkness again, when you speak of the record with them, you get sometimes a glimpse of this moral situation of this moral distress in which they lie. You can feel sometimes for one fraction of a second from uh, um, a, a light in the eye or a, a light that isn't in, in the eye. You can perceive that those people have a deep, uh, a deep problem in themselves, some form of cognitive dissonance. Very often they genuinely enlisted because they wanted to defend values such as uh, the, uh, protecting their country's constitution, defending their fellow citizens' freedom, uh, protecting democracy at large. And they end up in some gray office being asked by someone else to do exactly the opposite, to sit on the constitution, to massively violate freedoms, and to hurt democracy. So sometimes by speaking to these people, if you're lucky or unlucky enough to have done so, maybe you would have noticed how sometimes they, they look and sound broken deep down inside. And well, meeting with those fantastic people at Peng and, and other people participating in this, those, this project, we realized that we all had the same experience, speaking to them, feeling this moral distrust inside. And we thought that maybe for, for once, we could try to look not at the institution as a whole, not at the system as a whole, not a, as the concept of mass surveillance as a whole, but at the people within the system. And as I'm used to, I would say, to fight surveillance, it's, it's a big word, and I've, I've, I've been used to do this on a, on a political uh, scene in the European Parliament, in the French Parliament, on those silly governance meetings, don't get me started. Uh, I, I believe strongly this is a battle that must be fought also on a technological level. 
We need more Tor, we need more Pond, we need more Tails, we need more smart cryptography in decentralized way and beautiful free software that we can share together because sharing of knowledge is, is, the, is, is the way. But I'm convinced that there are other ways than the political and the technological ways to fight surveillance, that there are uh, cultural ways, human ways, humans speaking to humans. This is what I love about Intel Exit. This is to me what Intel Exit is about. It is humans speaking to other humans, humans that are trapped deep down in the darkness of the rabbit hole, humans that are morally lost in that rabbit hole. It is the ability for us to collectively shine a bright light from the outside to show those people a way out of the rabbit hole, a way for a better life for themselves, for their family, but a better life for society at large. We know we need more whistleblowers. We know what happens to whistleblowers. We know about Manning, Assange, Snowden, Brown, Hammond. We know what happened to Aaron Schwartz. We don't know what is happening or what happened to many others of them. Whistleblowers do the most courageous act of shining light from within. They risk their lives to shine light from within, within to shine light from the inside. With Intel Exit, we'll be modestly, collectively, trying to shine light from outside. I'm fascinated by what is happening in the last days. In just 48 hours that the initiative has been launched, we already ha have such tremendous um, replies, some tr tremendous response. We, we didn't need to, 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 to fake or, or pretend or impersonate anything like sometimes Peng does because things are, are just happening. It, it started uh, in a funny way, in a bit of a tongue-in-cheek uh, way, and it's starting to get so real that we are getting impressed by this. What it means is that I think there is a real need for that, and that we have a real power collectively, as humans, speaking to other humans, to base our choices on ethics, to make those people down in the rabbit hole understand that they can make this choice. They can rationally choose to take decisions based on ethics, that quitting secret services when you're asked every day to violate massively people's freedom, whether through mass surveillance or through drone strikes, is an acceptable moral option. This must be on the table. This debate must be held, whether it's here in the open or around the super secret coffee machine in the seventh basement of BND. This debate has to happen. We have to make this decision of quitting secret services not only an acceptable moral option, but also the, the courageous act it is. And then those individuals, men and women, once empowered by this decision, can decide whether or not they want to become a whistleblower. They want to shine some of the light from inside that they hold. But I'm convinced that this is only if we manage to do this collectively, if we go openly with, with an open hand and a genuinely uh, human approach towards these people, that collectively we can help them out of the rabbit hole for themselves, for the ones they love, for society in general, and ultimately we may be on the way to end mass surveillance. I thank you very much.